My name is Amata, and in this Red Gamer Tech video, I'm here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. We're going to kick things off today with a couple of AMD pieces, the first of which regarding second gen Ryzen Threadripper. Then we're going to move over to Ryzen Pro, as we have some desktop APUs as well as some mobile APUs. And speaking of mobile, we also have something from Intel as the 10nm Canon Lake has finally shown itself in notebook form. Then we're going to close things out with something cool from Nintendo regarding a return of the NES Classic Edition. So, as I said, let's kick things off with AMD. So the first item on our AMD list is of course Threadripper 2000. As AMD has confirmed that second generation Threadripper is now sampling. Now, for those of you who don't know, Threadripper 2000 is going to make use of the 12nm process, which is probably going to lead to some nice improvements like increasing power efficiency and overall, overall frequency, excuse me, in single and multi-threaded applications. But as I said, the main crux of this particular piece is that it's already being sampled and is now going to be available to all partners. This means that we're most likely going to be seeing a Q3 launch. And at the moment we have three SKUs listed by AMD, the 2900X, 2920X and 2950X. Now, as I said, we are going to be expecting some improvements, but one thing that we can't expect, unfortunately, is an increase in core count, as they are fairly likely to have the same core count as their predecessors. Now, of course, I did say likely, not 100% confirmed, but again, this is kind of me speculating a little, speculating, excuse me, a little bit here. But of course, we're going to have to wait and see, but I would be surprised if we saw an increase in core count. But of course, AMD could have something up their sleeves. Of course, I'm not privy to what they do behind closed doors, unfortunately. But let's move on to our second AMD piece, which, as I said, is regarding Rosen Ryzen Pro Mobile. So basically what we have here is that there was a press event recently and AMD announced a bunch of stuff for their APUs and the first thing we're going to discuss is a new series of APUs made for enterprise laptops and AMD is saying that this is the broadest portfolio they've ever had with the inclusion of these new APUs. Now there is mo uh, desktop as well as mobile but we're going to talk about the mobile APUs first and of course these mobile IPUs have been picked up already by a bunch of OEMs and these are all quad-core CPUs of course making use of Zen with graphics from Vega. So I have some specs for you. As you can see on the screen we've got the 2300U, 2500U and 2700U and we're going to see a compute unit count of 6, 8 and 10 respectively as well as 4 cores across all 3 SKUs and then four threads for the 2300U and then eight threads for the 2500U and 2700U. Of course we're going to have a difference in both base and boost clock speed with 2.5 gigahertz for the 2300U with a boost of 3.4 and then for the 2500U we're going to have see a 2 gigahertz base with a 3.66 gigahertz boost and then finally for the 2700U we're going to be seeing a 2.2 gigahertz base with a 3.8 gigahertz boost. Now for those of you with good memories, you might be going, hmm, all of this sounds rather familiar, and that's because, well, it's not really all that different from the previous Ryzen APUs that we've seen. When it comes down to pure specs, the nitty gritty as it were, they're pretty much identical, however, the main difference with Ryzen Pro, and again this is to do with the fact that they are for enterprise rather than for average users like you or I, the main differentiator is security and re reliability as they come with stuff like memory encryption and image stability. As I said though, we're already seeing a bunch of OEMs using these. We have Lenovo, Dell and HP. They were all present at the event, each showing off a portfolio of new products that make use of Ryzen Pro. And unfortunately we don't have pricing for most of these, but the HP EliteBook 600 series is going to start at $1,000. However, they also have the ProBook 645G4, which is going to be $760 to start, which is a, a bit more manageable, but of course, still a bit of an ouchie on the old wallets. Now, AMD was also keen to stress that there is going to be more consumer-level products coming out, but let's move over to the Ryzen Pro desktop APUs. Once again, we kind of see history repeating itself here in terms of the specifications, but... Let's still go through them anyway. We have four SKUs this time. We've got the Pro 2200G, 2200GE, 2400G, and 2400GE. 
and then we're going to be Ryzen 3 for the two 2200s, and then Ryzen 5 for the two 2400s. In terms of compute units for the 2200G and GE, we're going to be seeing 8 compute units, whereas for the 2400G and GE, we're going to be seeing 11. They all have the same core count, but as you might expect, the 2400G and GE have 8 threads, whereas the other ones only have 4. However, we do have quite a bit of variation in terms of the clock speed, so for the 2200G we're going to have a base of 3.5 GHz and a boost of 3.7, and for the GE we're going to be seeing a base of 3.2 with a boost of 3.6, and for the 2400G we're going to be seeing a base of 3.6 and a boost of 3.9, and then for the GE we're going to be seeing a base of 3.2 with a boost of 3.8. So as I already said, fairly similar to the previous generation, but again with a few extra features that are more targeted towards the enterprise level market. But speaking of mobile, as I said, we do have something finally from 10NM Cannon Lake. So to say that 10NM Cannon Lake has taken its sweet time to get to us is a bit of an understatement because, well, the first products are just now showing up three years after they were originally slated to launch, so yeah. When it comes to delays, I think this one takes the cake, but now we finally, as I said, have the first products, as we have a listing at a Chinese retail outlet for the Nilovo IdeaPad 330, and it is, as you might expect, a notebook that has included within it a 10NM Canon Lake processor. And in terms of the actual processor it features, it has a Canon, Canon Lake excuse me, Core i3-8121U processor. Now you may remember the name 8121U because we have actually talked about it before. You may even remember that I spoke about it myself when I talk about, so spoke about rather, a upcoming NUC called Crimson Canyon, which will make use of it. Now the 8121U is based on the 10NM process and has two cores and four threads and a TDP of 15 watts. In terms of the actual raw specs, however, the base frequency is 2.2 gigahertz and the boost is 3.10. Now what's also interesting is that this particular processor in this particular situation has no integrated graphics, which is a first for Intel in many years for a Core i3 notebook solution. But to be honest, this showing, although it is just one showing in one particular device, it is still a step backwards in comparison to where Intel was with 14NM and its sub-nodes. So this is not a great first impression for 10NM, and just goes to show that Intel have clearly not been getting what they wanted from Canon Lake, which is probably why it's been delayed so heavily, because obviously they announced it, made this big song and dance, but yeah, 10NM is going to be the next big thing, blah, 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 and obviously the actual results have not been brilliant. I mean, it's entirely possible this is just this one skew and that there's going to be better options available later on that have better performance and all that sort of things, but it's still not a great first impression. Obviously, I can't speculate as to what we're going to see in the future other than there probably is going to be more in the future. That's all I can really say. It's hard to talk specs when, of course, you're talking about something that you don't even know if it exists. But this does kind of line up with what Intel said previously, that 10NM is shipping, but we're not going to be seeing high volume until 2019. So we're going to be seeing it pop up in stuff like this, but we're not going to be seeing it really reach the volume that Intel would like after such a long production for quite some time. So yeah, we have finally got our first 10NM product, but it's not exactly blowing our socks off, let's just put it that way, shall we? But let's move on to the slightly disappointing news to some better news from Nintendo. Now, given that there was extremely limited quantities, laughably limited quantities, many people missed out on the NES Classic Edition or Classic Mini when it launched back in 2016, as Nintendo drastically underestimated the demand for the system. And you may also recall that back in September of last year, Nintendo said, yeah, we're going to be making some more, and now we have a firm re-release date for this, thanks to a tweet from Nintendo of America, which reads... Quote, NES Classic Edition will return to stores on June 29th, this system and the SNES Classic Edition are expected to be available through the end of the year. Now unfortunately there's no mention as to how many they're producing, but again the wording here does imply a limited run, but does imply that they are well aware of how much demand this is going to have and there should be at least enough to last until the end of the year. So if perhaps you missed out the first time around, which as I said, many, many people did because it was just almost impossible to get hold of in a lot of scenarios. 
then this is your chance and hopefully, fingers crossed, you'll have a bit more time this time than approximately 0.5 nanoseconds. But in all seriousness, I am glad to finally see a sort of firm date for this. So get yourselves at the ready as I fully expect this to be hard to get hold of, but hopefully not as hard to get hold of as pixie dust, which is pretty much what happened last time. So fingers crossed that Nintendo haven't underestimated demand again, but they were a little bit better about this with the SNES Mini, so, you know, we'll have to see. But it is going to be available once again for you to purchase if at all you are interested. So, that is me done for this video. Thank you very much for your support. As always, it is highly appreciated. Do remember to give us a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. It does help out a great deal, and I will see you next time.